it's my honor and pleasure to introduce the mayor for 2023, uh, Hung Wei. Thank you, Rick. And hi, everyone. It's really wonderful to be able to, you know, be here and say we're in this together. So I didn't prepare for today, but I have so much I would like to say about our city. This is our city. You know, you know, Lisa, I want to say nobody's just a resident or just anybody. We're in here together and we are looking out for our city in one way or another. So what I would like to say is Cupertino and all the Silicon Valley belongs to one region and we need to really work on that vision. So what I would like to talk about three levels of vision that I personally perceive it and I hope that it would resonate with a lot of you. So the first level is what, what makes a city? It's the people that makes a city and, and who are the people? There was the people who live here, uh, homeowners, or they live in an apartment. They come back at night to, to be, this is their home. And there are people who work here. A lot of the chamber, um, you know, whether you live here or not, your business is here. Your employees are here during daytime. And these are our residents too. And another level is really our future residents. Who are going to move into Cupertino in the next 10 years? or next five or next 50 years. So when we when we look at Cupertino or Silicon Valley, we, we need to look out for 20, 50 years. You know, everybody's talking about the housing element, right? So I'm gonna go straight into the housing element. Some people say it's, you know, why does the state give us so many things? And some people say, you know, we, we need to take things into our own control and do what we like to do. Yes, I agree with all those. But the housing element to me is an opportunity for us to plan our city for the next eight years, not just housing. When the housing comes, what do we need? We need public safety because when we have more people, we're gonna have more traffic, we're gonna have more children, we're gonna have, we need more parks, we need more entertainment, we need more precautions of how do we develop our uh, surroundings. We need more indoor swimming pools uh, to serve our residents. So when housing element to me is an opportunity for us to have a blueprint for the blueprint for the next eight to 10 years, what do you think our city will become? So public safety is very important to go with a uh, housing element that includes encompasses a lot of things, starting from traffic to uh, burglaries to uh, any kind of public safety. To in so what, when I went to a couple of the uh, Cal City's uh, seminars, I specifically picked public safety events to go to, and I learned two things. One is data-driven public safety. What does data-driven mean? We always say Cupertino is a safe city. We compare with New York, compare with San Francisco, compare with Los Angeles, but we have our own data. When we look at our data, what's going on? What crime goes up? What crimes goes down? So we use that as our own data-driven public safety planning. And then the city and the residents need to invest into infrastructure for public safety. So I'm gonna start right here because housing element to me is not just housing, it's public safety, it's finance planning. How can we have a safe, thriving city without a fiscal sound finance? So how do we look at our city's finance? I wanna draw a few, um, experiences I have as a school board member with the Fremont Union High School District, you know, we have five high schools. Actually, I want to survey, does anybody know how many high school sites Fremont Union High School District actually has? Hmm. We have Cupertino, we have Fremont, we have Homestead, we have uh, Lindbrook, we have Monta Vista. That's it? No. No, we have one more site, which is yeah, the King's Academy and Mount Rainbow Montessori, Montessori, that was our old Sunnyvale school. That's mm -hmm. our site. It's long-term lease. Um, the two tenants did all the improvement. Fremont Union High School District benefits from the rents. And that rents goes to our general fund to support our teaching and learning. So that's a little best, best kept secret in uh, Fremont Union High School District. And so it's investment. So how does the city of Cupertino, 
how can we invest and get return so that we can in turn invest into public safety, park and recreation activities or facilities. I think that's a whole another level of planning for economic development, for physical health, not just to stay balanced, but to get income so that we can continue to invest into our infrastructure. For example, I want to ask a pretty wild question. Um, we like our, anybody belongs to a sports center in Cupertino? Do you, do you like it? Yeah. Do you think it could be, <clears throat> a, say if we drink, we all have a drink, right? That's imagine. We have a state of the art of sports center with indoor swimming pools, with indoor racquetball facilities, with a lot of, you know, underground parking. Would that be better than this, what we have right now? Could serve many, many more residents who have much more programming into it. That's a dream we could have if we could think about, can we have creative financing, fiscal sound that we could invest into infrastructure to support our residents, to make our residents' life more enjoyable. So that's just a, you know, one thing that I'm going to throw out there. Can we imagine what Cupertino will be in the next 20 years? What facilities we can build to serve our residents? entertainment-wise and um, healthy-wise, and just to be proud of our city. So I want to add one more. Uh, integrated public safety, it's got data-driven into integrated public safety. The second one is facilities. What can we do to enhance our facilities? I want to go back to 20 years late, 20 years before. 20 years ago, what the then council members, what did they add to Cupertino? They added a brand new library, they added the community hall. They added the senior, um, the senior center, se senior center, and Quinling Center, the Mary Bridge. That's about a twenty-year cycle of what facilities Cupertino has built for our residents. For the past ten years, I, I have to say I haven't seen much. Um, maybe we added a library extension. That's a great addition. Um, I think we did by the Lawrence Mitty Park. That's about it. So what I think Cupertino at this juncture is we need to sit and look, what can we do in the next 20 years so that we can enhance our facilities, infrastructures to serve the current residents and people who work here and people who are moving to here. So that's two levels. First, we got to have money to do it. We cannot just have the money we have enhanced. So I am going, so I'm going to go to the third level is our staff. Our staff has expertise. We need to use and take advantage of our staff's expertise and encourage them to be innovative, to look for ways to enhance our finance, enhance our service, enhance how we do things. That's what a staff, um, we're relying on staff. I mean, Council Member Jerry is here, right? I'm going to say he's, his expertise in um, state laws, in legislative issues, but does he know how to build a, a house? Does he know how to maintain stone drains? I don't. Okay, so these are our staff. One thing I want to add in is during this storming season, I received two updates from our uh, emergency management department, how our staff worked 24-7 to help residents to clear branches, to go out and, and get sandbags. And that's just not it. Our staff planned ahead of time. They actually cleared a lot of bushes and a lot of branches. They actually cleared the storm drumming before the storming season comes. So that's the staff's expertise to serve our residents. They are our unsung heroes. And I think a lot of residents don't know about it. So, I didn't know about it until I received those two emails. Um, those are really all warriors. They, um, during holidays, they're not at home. They were out there on call 24 seven to take care of our streets, to make sure everybody's safe, to get sandbags to residents who need them. So these are our staff that's working in the background with their expertise. And we have staff who has, well, John is here, okay. The community development, right, uh, public works and also finance. As a mayor, 
And I would like to call on all my council members, our council members, five of us, to empower our staff to be innovative, to come up with ideas so that we can take advantage of their ideas and develop our city into the next 20, 30 years. So that's my call to the staff. Okay, another call is really, um, I always want to say, I'm going to repeat it a couple of times in the meetings, but not too many times, because uh, you know I, I heard about this in one of the Saratoga meetings. It says, um, if you are a public official, you're making a speech, the three things that you do, I don't know, JR, who, who we, heard, we heard about. So it's be bright, always talk about the bright things, be brief and be seated, okay? So I'm gonna be bright, be brief and be seated and, and answer questions. But what I'm trying to say is when we are doing our planning for the next 30, 40 years, then we could look, we, we would find out there are more things that we could do. So instead of, this is how I feel um, that the two years I've been council, we are very detail oriented. I love it. There are a lot of things other council members point out and I did not did not notice and which is really good. But my impression for the two years I'm a council was we have issues, issues, concerns, concerns, and we never come up with solutions. Okay, we have issues, concerns. The point is, where are the solutions? So I'm hoping from now on, our staff and our city council and our residents together, we're looking for solutions. We had this issue. How can we find solutions to move forward? We cannot let issues and concerns stop us from doing things. So that would be a one point I really like to make. Let's find solutions. And there are solutions out there. If we take advantage of our staff's expertise, our residents' knowledge, and our council members' diligence in doing research, hopefully we can, I'm very optimistic that we can together, we can come up with solutions, our financial solutions, our infrastructure solutions, our housing solutions, our traffic solutions, our public safety solutions. Let's come up with solutions. And the point I stop before I make it is partnership. The city doesn't stand alone. I'm really going to say another time. Our city is south of Sunnyvale, west of San Jose, and north of Saratoga. We don't have an east Cupertino or west Cupertino. Yes, every city has an east, west, north, south. But for Cupertino, we're 13 square miles long. It takes me 10 minutes to drive through Cupertino, east, west, north, south. If we have a transit center, whether it's an east side or west side, it benefits the whole city. It, so it's not about where we locate our transit or where we locate our, our, our public safety, our fire stations. It's where are we in the middle of Silicon Valley? How can we collaborate with West San Jose, with Sunnyvale, with Saratoga? to enhance all our residences, public safety together, our communication, our transportation. So we are not a city standing alone. We are part of the Silicon Valley as one city. I'm really hoping that we are developing Cupertino as a one city, not on east side or west side or north side or south side, we are one city. So uh, that is a concept and I hope that our residents can feel it when I walk to, I used to walk to Balco, I mean, shop Balco a lot. I feel that that's my mall. It's not located on the east side of the city. It is my mall. When I hope when everybody go to visit Rancho, San Antonio, that's their uh, open space. It's not the west side residence open space. When we go to, our kids go to Blackberry from pool to swim and have a good time. They are, they are taken from east, west, north, they're from all over Cupertino. So let's look forward Cupertino as one city and move forward together. We have no east side or west side, we're one side. So that's a concept I really hope that everybody can embrace. So that's another part of, I want to say, I love Cupertino. I wrote a little article at the uh, Cal Cities article at Peninsula Division about how Cupertino became my hometown. And so in the end, what I say is, and I hope everybody, you, whether you work here, you live here, you plan to move into Cupertino, 
When you sit on Panera Bread and look at Stevens Creek Boulevard, that is your street. When I look sunrises in Cupertino, that's my sunrise. When I look at kids, you know, riding bikes to school, those are our kids. We want to own the city so the city owns us too. Let's own the city together. Because when we have that, we know everything that adds to the city, we're so proud of it and we're part of it. I'm hoping everyone has that, you know, we all live here for a long time and 32 years for me. And then I'm pretty sure somebody lives 40, even just 10. Make the city your own city. Make the street your streets. Make the sunset your sunset, the sunrise your sunrise. So if we have that, then we have the passion to really invest into our city. And now here's a chamber. I want to bring the chamber in. What does the chamber do? I mean, someone just said, you are business people, you enhance business, inspire business, but Cupertino depends on businesses. Business serve our residents in three levels. First is we need businesses. We need shopping centers, we need groceries, we need retail, that's our needs. It's we can shop close to home. That's convenience. And second is economic development. Every time we shop, eat in Cupertino, the tax stays in Cupertino. So that's economic development. There's a third level, what I just heard. Is that George in sustainability? Anyway, creative wisdom and expertise from, from the chamber is what we really can use. How can our city is going to be, you know, our city is one of the advanced cities in Silicon Valley for sustainability environmental issues. How can the industry help the city move forward in becoming green, becoming sustain sustainable, and becoming the next century? That's what I would love the chamber to do. Not only bring retail, bring what we need, bring maybe a medical foundation, bring a biotech company, but also think about how you can support the city with your expertise, your knowledge in business to enhance our, our city's um, environmental issues, our public safety issues. Let's, let's, I want you to own Cupertino too. Even though you don't live in Cupertino, but when you're business in Cupertino, you own Cupertino and Cupertino owns you. So Chamber to me is a major part of economic drive. So I'm hoping that this chamber or the previous chamber can, this chamber actually can do more. I expect you to do more, not just bring retail, not just say, oh, we, this, this is going, you know, this is what the future trend is, but help the city say, what can we do to make the city a greener city, to make the city a friendly city? So I am a little, I'm a pretty competitive. I think Cupertino's, Cupertinians are really competitive, right? So Sunnyvale just being dubbed the hap, one of the happiest city in, uh, in, the, in the world or in the US, I'm not sure. I was very envious. So I think our goal should be in the ten, next 10 years, we want to be the happiest city. We want to be on the map. What makes people happy? Safe, you have to feel safe. You have to feel safe at home. You have to be, feel safe when you go out, walk on the street. You have to feel safe that this is the place you can relax. And what else? Entertainment. You have, you know, when you want to go out to do something, it's there. You know the city can provide you with parks, with golf, with indoor swimming pools, with retail shopping, with having a drink with your kids or with your friends. So that's part of it is safety entertainment, and what next? Belonging. We all have to belong to the city. So how do we belong to our city? So I think Rick said, I've been very busy. Um, you know, that's how I feel that we need to be belong to the city is take part in activities. Join chamber, join a nonprofit, join YMCA, join a family, join a church, be part of an organization or more that you know that you're part of core, you're part of the city and the city is part of you. So the more you join city activities, the more you're part of city. Come to, come to council and talk to council members and make your opinions known. 
That's part of being the city. So everyone has a, a, a space in Cupertino. So I want to describe Cupertino as a kaleidoscope. Everybody is a small, bright spot. Some people may be a little bigger spot. Some people may be a little small spot. The chamber is a colorful spot. The city staff is a really great, big, colorful staff. But everyone is a small, sparkling spot that makes Cupertino a beautiful kaleidoscope. A kaleidoscope cannot be beautiful without those sparkling spots. So missing one, people might think, oh, it doesn't matter, it can miss me. But if everybody thinks that way, then we're gonna have a very dark kaleidoscope. It's not gonna be a bright kaleidoscope. So I want everybody to feel that they're part of the city. And I've always known that I'm part of the city because I wanna say, I already bought my resting place in Cupertino. So when I say I'll die in Cupertino, I mean it. Okay. So I'm hoping that everyone have that feeling because when you own Cupertino, Cupertino owns you, that's when you're going to put your passion, your energy, your ideas, your innovative ideas into it. So I've been sort of, I didn't prepare today's script. I'm just speaking from my heart. I feel that Cupertino is a, one of the best city. Why? We have industry and we have beautiful neighborhoods. We have open space. So we have almost everything in our, in our little city. How can we integrate all of them to serve our residents, to serve our people who work here, to serve the next generation? That should be our vision. How we do it? Partnerships. We cannot do it ourselves. We partner with our staff. We partner with Nonprofit, we partner with Chamber, we partner with all school district, we partner with our sister cities, we partner with anybody you can think of, YMCA, we par partner with organizations to bring our city together. I think that's, if everybody has that in mind, and I do think everybody will feel that the contributions you make is bigger than you think. So I'm gonna stop right here. So partnership, economic development, housing encompasses tra uh, public safety is my vision for our city. And I'm hoping in the next 20 years, we would have infrastructure like what the 20 years before the council and the staff and the residents did. So that we know in 20 years, we're looking at Cupertino, it's gonna be even prettier, is going to be even more serving our residents, is even going to be more a brighter spot. We want to attract other people to come to us. I think we can do it because we are in central location in the west side of, of the whole strip. Cupertino really is very, very unique. We're small enough to feel like we're one home, but we're big enough in the central location to feel that we're part of the whole region. We can make a difference in the region by being the leader of the Regency, we need to catch up a little bit because I think we've been, the past 10 years, we've been sort of a doorman and we've been kind of taking care of ourselves. It is time that we move forward to take care of our residents in three levels. I cannot say it enough. Current residents, people who work here and people who are gonna move into Cupertino. So thank you for listening to me. Questions. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mayor Wei. Um, in the chat, uh, you'll see at the bottom, you can ask your people can ask questions there or they can raise their digital hands and we'll call on them. And uh, before I let people ask their questions, I just have to say, as uh, someone who spent most of my career talking about communications and working on presentations, there's nothing better than having someone present and that someone knows what they're all about and they know and they they know who they are and they know what they're about and so thank you mayor way um it just it's so nice to see um that we have uh, the type of leadership and elected officials that we do um connie briefly i saw your hand go up is it still up 
Well, actually, I was clapping hands at that point. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> because I, I so appreciated the comments that Mayor Way has made this morning. It's so, so positive um, and uh, bringing together more ideas than, okay, we're just focused on, say, the housing element, but that it brings in other concepts like safety in the environment. It just, um, yeah, it, it felt better than, say, here you're doing this. And even though it's big and important, you can't you can't forget that everything else is related and it's all related. And so keeping an eye on the overall is is so important, even when you're folk, when a big event is going on. So I guess I clapped and now I spoke, but I don't have a specific question at this point. OK, great. Well, as, as uh, Mayor Wade talked about uh, that about connections and being part of the community. It's been a, a real uh, pleasure for so many of us um, that have been and are Cupertino residents. Uh, there was an article in the Atlantic talking about studies correlate happy, there's a direct correlation between happiness and the number and strength of social connections. More so than just about any other issue. You think it would be the, the typical complaints that we all love to complain about, but in fact, it's it's the amount of our connection to uh, neighbors, community, friends, family. Uh, other questions? So before other questions, I wanna make two more points. One point is I will be the first person to admit, I don't know everything. They'll, actually, I don't know a lot of things. We're here all to learn together, to be educated together. I love to be educated. You know, when I, come to chamber, your speakers, I'm educated. And when I go to Rotary, we have speakers, I'm educated. Where our staff talk about this program, that program, this project, that project, I'm educated. And I love to be educated. The second thing is I really believe that uh, we are in this together. So I cannot emphasize enough, there is no East San Jose, West, uh, East Cupertino, West Cupertino. We are in this together. Let's develop and People said I don't. They don't want me to use develop, but we are developing into the future. Uh, let's move forward together as one city, because if Blackberry Farm Pool is enhanced, it's enhanced for all our children that live in Cupertino. It takes about fifteen minutes to drive from the edge of our Cupertino in West San Jose to Blackberry Farm Pool, and if there is a shopping, if if the rice or the Velcro eventually develop, everybody from Cupertino is going to visit there whether they live in close to Rancho San Antonio or they live in Lawrence Expressway. So we are one city together. I think if we can grab that concept, we can really know that our city has so much potential, so much good that we can do for our residents. So I'm hoping that's, uh, uh, that's, that could be something to think about. And also, so I wanted, if you, you have, I'm accepting questions, but if you have no questions, I would like to ask the chamber, the challenge I propose is the chamber needs to be a leading agency in innovative ideas so that you can support the city in not just retail, but also sustainability, traffic. You, we need your expertise. So that's a challenge I wanna to give to the chamber. Great. Well, thank you, Madam Mayor. I think we have, um, like everyone else, we're we're in this together. We have, uh, we're just gone through a, a, one of the more significant business die-offs in in recent history. Um, I know there's, uh, like the rest of the nation, Cupertino politics have become. Uh, fairly acrimonious. I know there's a campaign committee talking about how the, the total number of business licenses, uh, only a small percentage are part of the chamber. And that's actually very true. Um, if you understand the economy, you understand that most of the people who work in Cupertino, most of the people who uh, work in buildings in Cupertino, either work for a, a company that's a member of the chamber or works on a property or in a facility that is owned and operated by a, a, a chamber member. So we, 
we have the largest, biggest economic uh, participants in our community that are really paying for our services that we provide really to everyone. So um, our biggest focus that we really have to creatively uh, embrace is that changing landscape, especially out of COVID. Um, I spent many years, as you know, working in the city. Retail is a particularly valuable and there's no greater sector of the economy that has changed and is changing than retail. So I know that the chamber and the city are going to have some real um, real issues to wrestle with is how do we realign our economic um, services and businesses so that the, the taxes generated by businesses pay for the services that benefit our community. And that's the bottom line. The, the single uh, most significant beneficiary of what we do is the city. Uh, the, the largest portion of, of uh, taxes paid to the city general fund are paid by businesses. So we care. Uh, people think that we sit in back rooms and smoke cigars. It's not true. Most of our members are small, but in fact, it's the largest employers and the largest businesses that help us help everyone that we can. Um, I see some hands. I went very long with that. But George, thank you for raising your hand so I could stop talking. Um, <laughs> well, Lisa uh, went first. Uh, so I'll yeah. defer to Lisa. Oh, okay. Lisa, I don't see Lisa. Um, I'm here. Okay. If you, if you have your hand up, uh, why don't you go ahead? I have my hand up. Can you hear me? I yes, can hear you. Thank you. Okay. I, I am actually watching this in a situation where I can't take notes. I will have to go back and watch it because I have a lot of things I would comment on. But one thing that struck me that I remembered um, in the beginning of what the mayor said and is that we haven't come up with a lot of solutions. And I, I really disagree with that. And I kind of am wanting more information, but I will get that individually if the mayor is willing. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Um, actually, one announcement I want to make is I'm having a mayor's um, morning chat with the mayors on the first Tuesday of every month at Holders Country Inn in Cupertino. Uh, so um, that would I would send out that notice um, to you know to all my con all the contacts and the city might make announcement um, coffee and tea on me but any other food <laughs> you have to pay for yourself okay so every month you can come personally so when I want to explain a bit when I said no solutions I'm more talk about infrastructures okay I just don't feel we have solutions on infrastructures and of you know what we really need to do in the in the future and um, uh, that that's what I'm I'm talking about. Okay, because it came across to me, I don't know about the rest, yeah, yeah, no. yes, there were no yes. solutions. Which yeah. yeah, well, okay, so maybe just the two years. And solutions, more. tough yeah. solutions yeah. are not easy to come by. That's why you need yeah. the collaboration. So thank you. Yeah. Now we can talk more, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think definitely collaboration has been the, really been the key to uh, Cupertino's success. George. Yeah, thank you so much, Mayor. I um, was really inspired to hear like a, a broader vision, and I love living here. I've been I'm a tenure resident, and um, being a part of you know a lot of different families, I see so much talent and a lot of like really intelligent people here. And I wanted to ask, um, you know, how do like whether or not there are places people should look into to get involved, or if there's a published list of expertise that you'd like to have, you know, be contributing to any of the solution making that your staff and the city staff is, you know, trying to achieve because I I just come across a lot of smart people who do a lot of different things professionally. And, you know, it's kind of hard to know how to hook into the city. But if there's a way that the city could help share like, hey, we're looking for people who know about this, this or this, um, I think that would do a lot because I know a lot of families who love being here, but don't really know how to get engaged with, um, you know, the, the, the future. So absolutely. So they are, uh, the, the first things come to my mind is our commissioners and committees. Actually um, the um, we have 13, I want to say 12 or 13 commissioners 
commissions and each have five commissioners. That's all residents or related uh, people who have expertise. For example, I think there's a question from Bill. How can I volunteer to work with your office on the topic of sustainability? We have a sustainability commission and the interview is coming up. And I do believe the deadline is today to apply. Okay, so um, that's a great area for you. If you're interested in sustainability, apply that. And we ha they have monthly meetings, they advise on the council or the city on sustainability issues. So that would be the expertise you're looking for. And George, the, in addition to commission the committees, what I believe in is if you join, um, if you just communicate with on um, each, okay, look at our agenda. And there are things that you're really interested in. You can really dive into that issue and say, hey, for example, I'll give you a real easy, uh, short example. Um, because uh, somebody asked about the park. Do you think park is part of the infrastructure? Absolutely. Park serves our residents, our kids, everybody. And so I want to take Memory Park as an example. It's been on the master plan for a long time. And it's, you know, we've been collecting input and this and that. If you're interested in parts, that's where you can really put your expertise in there, put input. And when we have meetings, speak up and get your ideas through the staff, through the council. So when I talk about solutions, I'm thinking about our memory part. It's been out there for a long time. And we've done a lot of outreach and a lot of residents have good opinions, good expertise. There is a time I think outreach needs to be done. And then we need to, this is just my personal opinion. We need to engage a professional designer and come take the opinions of our residents and design three or four models and then put out to the community again. Hey, now we have concrete things. What do you think? You can morph it, work together. And that's action, right? And then eventually we'll come up with a plan to really do it. So I just feel that we are we need this kind of a drive. We are what is our goal? Our goal is to make things happen, not to continue to have opinions. When opinion is done, we then we have a design by professionals. Who knows to how to design parks? Uh, I'm absolutely not me. Okay. Our staff might know some, our residents might know some, but when that is done, let's get a professional to come up with four designs or five designs. And then we have concrete things to work on. And then we can come up with a plan. So that's when I mean solutions. That's what I mean. In 10 years or five years, I hope it's five or three, we need to have a memorial park done. Okay, so the residents can really enjoy it. Is still a perfect way to do memorial park? Probably not. But there is no perfect way or anything. We compromise, we get our ideas, and we find the most feasible, the most popular, or the most usable part that we can do. Then we do it. Maybe in the next 50 years, after 50 years, somebody might say, we want to redo it. Okay. So, but think long term. Think about the planning stage, have a timeline. That's what I mean, solutions. I hope the city, when we are doing something, we have a timeline. We, this is a two year plan. Let's get a plan and do it. This is a three year plan. Let's get a plan and do it. I personally think Memorial Parks being on the general, the, the park and recreation thing for a long time. And we just haven't had a, solution, a, a, a plan to go with it. That's my personal feeling as a resident, actually. So I'm hoping that we are on page. You have expertise, find where you're interested in, get into it, get in front of the council, get in front of the staff, and be part of the solution. Great. Thank you. Claudio, you've had your hand up for a while. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Uh, Mayor Wei, first and foremost, thank you for today. I think that uh, we're all here indeed as resident, and it's not about names or title and this and that, and this is really a collective effort to make our city a much better place. I can only talk about myself as a Cupertino resident, a proud one that's been here also close to 10 years. And on the economic side of it, I've always been a huge advocate to make sure that our city is known throughout the world, wherever I go, Korea, Japan, Brazil, Europe, where I do promotions on bringing groups here. And I think our city is one of the very few city, if not the only city left in the world, that does not have a place where 
for instance, hey, I'm I am Amazon. I'm calling, let's say, the Chamber of Commerce, but I want to reach out to our city and say I want to bring a convention or a uh, uh, people of my company. What hotel? What restaurant? What bar? What entertainment can I provide? What winery? What where? Where? What? How? And I think that is the missing piece because I'm. I've been voted again in 2022, the top three hotel general manager for the entire California out of over 6,000 plus hotels. And my aim has always been to promote our city. I've never been promoting my hotels alone. I promote the destination. And I think that Cupertino can, on the economic side, benefit so much by being able to open to all travel agents uh, in the United States, all convention services in the United States. And there's so much potential that our city has. I am not complaining. I see the opportunities and I think it's beautiful. And um, But I also want to focus on your, your specifically talked earlier about public safety. Are we planning on also maybe increasing, enhancing our public safety budget? Because times, I believe, has shifted since COVID. And we we're, we do have a number of residents who are somewhat kind of scared or worried of what's happening. Because as you all know, a lot of nighttime insecurities now happens during daytime. And so we're all trying to be secure. We want to continue to be one of the safest cities uh, in the United States. So. But again, wrapping it all up, I'm I'm optimistic. I'm very happy. Uh, the chamber definitely will definitely want to be uh, taking you on sustainability challenges. Uh, but I think it's wonderful that you're spreading the message of being a uh, resident because this is what this is all about. We're trying to find some common grounds, common sense uh, solutions here. And I'm I, always proud to be a Cupertino resident and do whatever I can to assist my city because I love it. Thank you, Claudia. So I'm going to answer two of your questions, put my comment to that. But remember, I'm just one council member, so I can't make decisions for the whole council. As for convention, you know, bring tourists here. If that is a goal for Cupertino residents, then we need to set a goal, say we want to develop a convention center that could accommodate 500 people. I think right now, if we have 300 people, we can't even find a place in Cupertino. So if that's a goal, then it's a general policy that the council can say, the staff go do some research and what can we do? Financially, location, what? We can come up with solutions if that is a goal. I'm not saying that's a goal, but I'm just saying ideas like this can be on the table and people can say, is it possible? Some people immediately say, no, we don't have space. It's not possible. I want to say nothing is impossible if we have a mindset to it. So that's one thing we can say. If we want to bring true tourism into Cupertino, have a convention center or event center where we can have a wedding for 500 people. We can have a um, fundraiser for 500 people. So that can be a goal if that's a council goal or a residence goal. So that's an answer to your Innovative ideas, if that's going to come up, let's make a plan, get a staff expertise, get a research, and we move forward to that, if that's a goal. The second about public safety as do are we going to put more funding to it? Same thing. It's, I'm not one person to decide, but if this is a work plan that the staff's going to do some research and come up with solutions and we get residents input we get sheriffs fire emergency um neighborhood um neighborhood watch groups to get that in there can we put more money into infrastructures the council can decide so that's also another probably a major work plan so all these ideas are really really great what i'm trying to say is set goals set timeline and do it and find solutions to do it. You just, just do it. Because if you don't do it, you can always study, continue to study, research, study, research. I, I don't think Cupertino will, make, will move forward without have a specific timeline and goals and find not the perfect solution, but a compromised best solution available and really make the investment. I believe in investment in infrastructure. 
So back to the school board. On my 11 years old school board, we passed four bonds. And after I left, they passed one more bonds. We remodeled all five high schools, plus our district office. Brand new buildings, science building, cafeteria, student center, fields, and everything. Why? And you guys, you guys pay for it. Why? Because that's an investment into our future generation for 50 years. That's an important thing for the Fremont Union High School District to do. And so we concentrate on that because we want to provide the best education, location, place, facilities for our students, for our teachers, for our staff. You know, that inspire the students and teacher staff to do better. We heard at grand opening of Cupertino High School's uh, quad with their uh, facilities, their student center, we heard one student speak to her friend, say, wow, now we got we to gotta do better because we have this beautiful facility. We got to step up. So that's inspiring, right? So for, for our students to feel that, for our residents to feel that, our teachers to feel that, that's what makes a school district move forward. So I am a big, I'm, I'm a big on infrastructure investment. I believe that's going to inspire a lot of things. And also, you guys are, um, sorry, I mean, one more thing. You guys are, you know, chamber, right? So think about your investment, what's the return? You, you don't just spend money. If we have an event center, you're going to get rent. So that comes up to your general fund. So I'm just saying that let's think about um, investment returns when you invest on things. In the Fremont Union High School District, we save so much on water, on electricity, on maintenance. That save our general fund. Go back to teaching and learning. So everything is related. I am going to depend on our expertise staff in finance, in our public works, and the chamber and our residents' wisdom to move Cupertino forward with investment in into infrastructures with revenues that could support that kind of a spending. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Hung. We have, uh, I think next up is uh, Sean Penchal. Sean, are you still there? Uh, Sean, you're, uh, you're muted. Well, while Sean is unmuting, I'm just gonna say uh, all of the projects you talked about at the beginning of the meeting uh, Mayor Way, though, I think those are uh, some of the best examples of the city's uh, success building human infrastructure. Um, you know, all of those projects are really built around uh, people to serve people. And it's not about historically, uh, we like car projects. And it turns out cars don't bring people together, but libraries do and community centers and all the things you talked about. So, um, Sean, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, why, don't, why don't you go ahead? You had a question. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Um, honorable, uh, honorable Mayor and uh, fellow Cupertino community members, um, it, it's definitely a pleasure to uh, you know, hear the mayor and her uh, new agenda for uh, expanding and growing a, a, a better Cupertino, uh, 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 a, a Cupertino that is together. And um, that's very exciting, uh, that essence. Uh, as, a, as the president of the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce of 2023, um, you know, as the mayor had mentioned, the Chamber of Commerce was uh, created in 1954 um, as a vehicle and as a group um, a business advocacy group that was there to um, establish the Cupertino community. The Articles of Incorporation for the City of Cupertino were um, voted on in 1955, I believe. And, you know, just history maybe, I hope it's correct. And the votes were 254 yes and 196 no. Um, along the way, you know, Cupertino has become an outstanding community. I believe 2020. Uh, census was somewhere around 54,000 population. Um, we have major industrial and business parks. We have um, tremendous education uh, organizations, uh, De Anza College being one of them, and uh, some of the greatest high-tech leaders uh, moving forward. It's, uh, it's definitely an area of great promise, 
great collaboration and great community. Um, to come to this level takes a lot of goodwill. And I think that's what we want to see moving forward. And I do appreciate the mayor's initiative and enthusiasm and our Cupertino community members for that. Um, I just wanted to go back. I think Rick had mentioned something about uh, some of the financial issues, the pandemic, namely. And in 2020, the chamber um, had uh, under the uh, President Marissa Spatafor, she had had many initiatives. I have one which was Cupertino Together, which was an initiative um, during pandemic to actual collect, to bring funds to support local businesses, to give to local residents and people who could not um, afford or did not have the means to get that, you know, to get that food. And during the pandemic times, how wonderful and critical was that response? That was absolutely great. And in 2021, um, I was the president at that time, and we supported initiatives such as the Dark Sky Ordinance, the Sustainability Issue, um, the Bird Safe Ordinance, um, Assembly Bill 927, which was to help extend the baccalaureate program in community college such as Nianza. What a wonderful opportunity for people to stay local, to stay at this university, uh, college and be able to get that bachelor's degree. That's awesome. Um, and then of course, we that, during those times, we also helped support the Stop the Asian Hate Rally. Um, and we looked into feasibility of future innovations that could support the community of which in 2022, under the president of uh, Claudio Bono, he looked into tourism and he looked into ways we can enhance the engagement and the excitement of the Cupertino community and, and find a way that we can share that with the world. And I think he's done a great job of that. And now we're here in 2023 and we are really looking for a way to continue that goodwill. And I think the chamber has always been since 1954 uh, uh, to be a supporter of this community. And we want to continue to do that. And we hope that you'll work with us and let us know what we can do to improve, to be better, and to continue to inform, to involve and inspire our Cupertino community. Thanks so much, Mayor Wei, for everything you're doing and we wish you luck. Thank you, Sean. So I really wanna follow up with your goodwill. I do believe goodwill comes from the heart. We really bring everybody together. We need to come from a location of goodwill. I believe that everybody has the best intention we might have different perspectives, but when we have goodwill, we can work together. So we have actually two expert expertise staff here. Let's see, Tina is our economic development director and John is in our, I mean, his expertise is, is, is beyond me, okay? So we have our staff here and they can testify. They really can work with among the staff and and among the chamber to really work on things that move our city together. I'm going to give them that talk and ask them, what do you think about how do we partner with different organizations to move our city in a way that <clears throat> we double our resources? One thing I want to emphasize is there is no you and I. When you make money, doesn't mean I lose money. We have to raise each other up that when you, when businesses make money, actually the city and the rest is benefits, not just from tax base, but also from services. So we want to raise each other up. It's, there's no you and I, we're in this together, even with the business, development, business, retail, and you know we're all in this together. So I'm hoping that we all have this mentality that we want to raise each other up. I, I personally believe if a business who invests into Cupertino makes money, it means the city is making money. The residents are benefiting from services. So I'm gonna give it to our staff to speak a few words. Sure. Uh, Tina, do you wanna go next? This is uh, historically, uh, we've always saved uh, a spot for city staff and it's good to see you. Uh, Tina, you have the floor. Thank you, thanks Rick. And thank you Mayor Wei for your kind words. Um, I, I agree with everything you're saying and you know, in my profession in economic development, I always say, I always joke around that economic development is a team sport. Um, you cannot do anything by yourself. So partnerships, kind of creating that shared vision and having a people, you know, around the table to help you 
get to that shared vision, shared goal is 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 the game. So um, I'll just give a very brief update on 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 what I'm working on. So 2022, of course, was a busy year, lots of changes, right? But ton of good stuff going on as well. So one of the programs I think I mentioned um, at one of our meetings last year is the launch of Cupertino Business Outreach Program. Uh, we lovingly call it the CBOP. <laughs> and what that is, is it's a first time um, in-person corporate site visit program that we have established in Cupertino. And it's meant to kind of add to our high touch approach around economic development. So we visit local companies, um, it, with the goal to enhance working relationship with them, right? So these conversations are helping us identify the unique needs of our private sector, connect with them, and you know, connect resources with them where applicable. Um, a few of the businesses we have visited include Sun Designs, Gloria's here. Hi, Gloria, good to see you again. Um, Water Efficient Gardens, Nirvana Soul, PGA Tour Superstore, Mobilium, and Shane Co. So these have been really unique conversations, right? Are we heading into a recession? We heard that at one of our meetings. Um, or we find out, for example, Sun Designs has a networking space available for anyone. If you want to host a group, reach out to Gloria. So this is kind of, you know, giving us a chance to connect with them one-on-one, -on -one, um, talk in detail about the business, but also understand trends in their industry, right? Our businesses, you know, you guys that, are, that run businesses, you're the expert in your field. So this is a great learning opportunity for the city. Um, so last year, we also redesigned and relaunched the Business Connect, which is the Economic Development Newsletter. So again, you know, with similar themes of outreach and marketing, um, we, we're continuing to grow that. And it's a great way for us to highlight positive stories about our local businesses, new businesses coming to town. Again, any resources that may be applicable to businesses. So sign up if you haven't already. Um, speaking of engagement, the the business and residence survey is still open. So please, please give us your feedback. Um, I'll paste the links to the newsletter and the survey after um, after I talk. And then something that we're building on right now is a small business technology platform, which will offer sort of like an app-based experience for local businesses to kind of connect with peers, connect with resources, connect with me online. So look for that. Excuse me. Look for that in the coming months. And in, in addition to boosting our outreach efforts, there's also data gathering going on. I think, you know, you, you heard the mayor alluding to this. So kind of look at what the numbers are showing us. Where can we be more proactive, right? And retail, of course, continues to be a, a big perennial topic in our world. So we'll be talking about that a lot and bringing that to this group. Um, Mayor Wei, you also mentioned your dream about Cupertino earlier. <laughs> and I'm also very interested in putting resources aside to market the strengths of our city that not only fosters civic pride, but also establishes Cupertino's role really in the broader regional economy, right? So again, partnerships are really important in this work. I look forward to working with all of you on that. And with that, um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Rick, thank you for the opportunity, and I appreciate everyone's support, and I will see if John, John's here from our planning division, if he wants to give an overview of the latest development activity in Cupertino. I think, so, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. John, do you mind? I'm going to um, just jump in while we're talking about it, just to reinforce what an incredibly uh, valuable and important resource Tina is specifically, and the city is generally uh, one of the more important nodes of, of information in our community. Um, uh, the antithesis of what uh, the mayor was talking about, that network of support, is a crab bucket. And I, I don't know if people know that you don't have to put crabs in cages. You just put them all in a bucket and they pull each other down. They're constantly fighting so that no one actually gets out of the bucket. So they, they are, they're, they're self-enforcing to the worst possible condition. And that's basically the exact opposite of what uh, the mayor was talking about. And so that's exactly the sort of thing we want to avoid. That's when economies and businesses and communities fail. It's when you get that crab bucket dynamic. So we're, we're lucky to have uh, the city that we have and the staff that we have. And so John, who's got the dashboard for what's going on in our in our community. 
Thanks. Uh, thanks, Rick. And thank you all for uh, having the patience to listen to me <laughs> for the next minute or so. Um, let me just share my screen really quick. Um, if anyone can see that, it's just uh, our development activity report for January 2022. Um, typically, over the holidays, not much happens, but between the last LAC and um, this one, you know, the biggest item that was approved in the city was um, the Marina Plaza uh, project where we had 260 uh, condo units approved with um, 32, I'm sorry, 36 uh, below market rate units included in that, as well as 41,000 square feet of retail. Um, you know, and this was, you know, the important part of this too, we didn't lose the city didn't lose a lot of retail with this development as well. You know, we, I think the, the, the net loss is probably about 3000 square feet, which is, which is pretty, I don't want to say inconsistent, but you know, it's pretty telling that, you know, we, the, the, this developer was able to keep virtually the same amount of retail, but also uh, contribute towards the city's needs for housing and especially the BMR housing as well. Uh, the big difference between uh, this iteration of the Marina Plaza development and the prior one that expired September of last Two years ago, September 2021, uh, was that there's no hotel. The biggest change was no hotel as part of this development. Um, going from there, uh, Westport, the as you can see, if you drive down uh, Stevens Creek towards Monta Vista, um, you can see that the BMR, the senior BMR building is going up. And I think they're framing the top floor, the roof to the top floor as we speak. And the townhomes are um, gradually, uh, but quickly, um, going in as well as we speak. And um, the biggest um, news for that is that the assisted living facility has applied uh, for the building permits about three months ago, and they are due to resubmit for their second round of comments. Uh, going forward, um, the forum um, is, is uh, should be going by the end of the month for the art, for the art piece. Um, and let's see, let's see. Canyon Crossing is has applied for their demo, demo permits and Beta Brothers development that's on the corner of uh, uh, Foothill Boulevard and Stevens Creek Boulevard um, have has their building permits approved and they should be starting construction um, if, if they haven't done so already. Um, and that's pretty much it in terms of uh, development projects. The housing element, uh, we are still... Um, accepting comments on the draft that was um, sent out to the public a few months back. Um, and hopefully we'll get um, something to HCD relatively soon. Um, and, but I like to also echo Tina's comments that, you know, this, you know, among staff and community, there's a, there's a lot of collaboration. That's a big part of our job. You know, Tina and I collaborate quite a bit um, on projects and whatnot. And um, as well as, you know, in, in the planning division, we have, our, we have a lot of tentacles that like, kind of spread out to all the, you know, we got to manage everybody, uh, kind of a jack of all trades and in many senses. Um, but, uh, you know, I, but we, you know, we do, I staff appreciate the community and, uh, the, and the chamber and, um, and the council members as well. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, questions for John? I have, uh, there's, I see one question, but while, uh, John, is there a link to your spreadsheet or is there a way that can be sent around? Uh, yes, I think, uh, Tina, when you get to upload the, I know you upload it under the economic development, correct? Uh, webpage. Yeah. So I include a link of that in my newsletter, but I'm also pasting it here. For yeah, I don't, yeah. The news matter, newsletter comes out via email. Don't get me going on email, okay? <laughs> it I used to be email would yeah. stop during the holidays. Email would stop. It doesn't stop. No. Email never stops. <laughs> yeah. So, John, I I'm, hate to do this to you, but it you've got to know it's coming from the heart. Do you have like a two or three sentence elevator so when people walk into the chamber and say, oh, by the way, what's happening with Valco? I, Is there I, a factual <laughs> like i don't know is kind of where that i know it's the city has it oh god is factual but it's not sufficient you're it's, asking me to step on a landmine right? no i'm asking you to direct us <laughs> away from the landmine and just say you know what this is where the landmine is and that's where it's at you, you, you know uh we do 
the the project manager who's Hugo, she's been kind of the the Valco expert. She she maintains the um the the web page on the on the city website. Okay. And you know, and I, I would point folks in that direction if if they aren't check the website. Check the website. You know, if they aren't um satisfied with that, they can always reach out to me directly and I could I could talk to them and at least point them in the right direction and find right. the answer for but, them. But check the website is good yeah. and we'll make sure to have that. Sure. It's I, yeah. mean, I believe it's cupertino.org backslash Valco. It's very simple. Our, right. our city Great. does maintain a very um, informative website, but it's a huge lot of information, very hard to navigate. But I subscribe. I put on, on the chat. I subscribe to City News. So you get all the news. And so I subscribe to City News, Fremont Union High School District News, CUSD News, Valley Water News, and uh, Silicon Valley Community Energy News and uh, PGA News so that you get those news. I know, Rick, emails drives you crazy. Drives me crazy. No, it's, I yeah. create but a lot news. myself. The city know. news is very good. Uh, so it's, I would encourage everyone to go to our city website and just say subscribe. You can delete all the ones you don't want, but there's some very important news. Our website is very maintained as well, very well maintained by our staff. So it's very transparent. So, um, it, and, and, if you don't, if you need more information, yeah, get in touch with John. <laughs> I don't yeah. even know a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> the, just about everything is there. It's, uh, yeah, it's an uh, incredible information resource. But it's uh, not there, just you. People ask me, what's happening in Velcro? I said, well, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good question that it's in a lot of people's mind and it's not easy to answer. Yeah. Um, great. Other questions for the mayor? Uh, for John or Tina? Great. Well, um, we're on time. I do have some announcements. And as after that, uh, hand it over for the good of the order because there's a, quite a bit going on for 2023. Uh, in case people didn't do the math, um, yes, the Chamber of Commerce will be 70 years old next year. Wow, and, and it was created 70 years ago next year because um, it, people wanted to create the city of Cupertino so it wouldn't just become San Jose or Sunnyvale. And uh, so, that, uh, so we're gonna be doing some celebrating but looking forward to working with the Historical Society and all of our area businesses for an appropriate celebration of that, of that occasion. Um, for 2023, uh, we have the uh, chamber board installation uh, next Wednesday afternoon, uh, excuse me, evening in uh, the Cupertino room. You're welcome to drop by. We'll have uh, a very brief ceremony and uh, a reception. Uh, the week after that, we have our green business certification. It's free. If you sign up and you're not a certified green business, sign up. Come to the chamber, we'll feed you breakfast, fresh coffee. And uh, we have um, experts that have been hired by the state to help you get your certification. And if we can get 20 or more businesses um, uh, signed up, that's our goal at the chamber. Before Earth Day, then uh, we're gonna be happy that your op operating costs go down, your sustainability goes up, it's a good thing, and there's the promotional opportunities are also significantly enhanced. Um, after that, we have our uh, Lunar New Year luncheon. That is going to be, uh, it'll be the, I think it might, um, I don't remember offhand, but it might be the 20th year that that event has been held. That will also be at the Cupertino Room at the Quinlan Community Center on uh, Thursday. February 2nd. All of this information is on our website, uh, cupertino-chamber.org. And that's all we're doing, aside from just a, a thousand other things. So we're trying to keep up with uh, the mayor, but uh, it's kind of pathetic. We can't do it. Uh, we're just really busy. We're not insanely busy. Um, and then lastly, uh, we have, this is the year of the rabbit coming up. And uh, Cupertino Rot Rotary uh, is, has spearheaded a Year of the Rabbit. You'll see, if you go to cupertinorabbits.com, you'll see that these statues are going to be popping up 
Um, I'm trying to avoid all the puns, but they're going to be popping up all around the community. Uh, thank you for Rotary for leading that. And it's our pleasure at the chamber to be actively supporting that. Go to the website. There's still time to place an order for a rabbit. And uh, those will, uh, that'll be a nice new part of our landscape uh, moving forward into the year. This year of the rabbit. Uh, so that's all I Yes. One more to that rabbit project. You know, we are, we are a city or a valley concentrated on STEM and science, which is great. But this year of the rabbit thing is to, is to advocate for, for arts, for the arts people. You would be amazed how artsy people can decorate a rabbit that you just want to buy it and bring home. So we also want to really enhance the the concept that arts is a great form that every youth and every adult should 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 enjoy. So the year of the rabbit project is really concentrated on the on the arts. And you should yeah. all see it as what they're doing in Chicago with the bull and Philadelphia and all of that. So it's actually a wonderful thing for our city because whether we like it or not, there's always going to be someone who's going to pick it up on the PR side and it's going to put Cupertino on the front page. And I think it's a wonderful event and I can't wait to have my rabbit in front of the Cupertino Hotel. Yes. Well, the chamber has its rabbit. Um, Michael Strauss, do you have your rabbit? Need one. <laughs> Thank you. I couldn't resist, sorry. Um, any other announcements for the community, uh, for the good of the order? Wait, can I just say one more thing? Um, you know, I know a lot of people are, are bothered or, you know, about the uh, civic grand jury's report. You know, I see that as an opportunity for Cupertino to really work together, for our council to really work together. So I talk about a lot of what I have envisioned, but that's just a, you know, council makes policies. Who really does it? It's the resident, the staff, the, the organizations, they make that policy great. So I do believe it's an opportunity for the council, for the staff, to really work together, to really recognize, you know, we can have this vision and our staff and our residents and our, you know, uh, business community, our nonprofits can work together to, to, to realize that vision. So, um, so I see it as an opportunity and I don't see it as a uh, negative part of Cupertino because, you know, I'm, Again, I'm from education. I really think we all need to continue to learn together. We encourage our students to be lifetime learners. Let's be a model for a role model for our students. We are lifetime learners. We learn from our past and we move forward to be a better person or better policymaker or, or better staff or better residents or just become better. So Let's be lifetime learners and make this a learning opportunity for all of us. Right. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, with that, I think uh, we should wrap this up because we're not going to say anything more inspiring or positive or necessary than what you just did. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, our next meeting will have uh, our new state senator. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, we're looking forward, forward to that and uh, have a great new year. This is a good year to make it a great year. Take care, everyone. Everyone. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Bye bye. I'm going to do grandma duty now. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye, everyone. Yeah.